Okay, so I uh, use my C-clamp press to uh, press out the U-joints out of the uh, two ends here, or two uh, axle shafts here, and uh, that was a frustrating experience. If for some reason on the last one, it just it would not stay centered on it, it kept hitting the edge of the yoke. That was just a nightmare. Anyways, I did eventually manage to push it out, and that's enough for today. 38 Celsius with the uh, humid X or somewhere just right right around 100 Fahrenheit so it's just too brutal to do anything today so that's uh, it I'll uh, tack this uh, update onto uh, onto whatever one I do tomorrow okay today is a bit of a frustrating day I'll call it a sob story day um, a lot of things are not panning out today I ordered some uh, new inner uh, bearings for the uh, for the uh, front axle. I ordered new seal inner seals for the front axle, and uh, and I was investigating, you know, what I'm going to do about the transfer case for this uh, 4x4. And I convinced myself that a good idea was a divorce transfer case, and I found a uh, transfer case, uh, a divorce transfer case uh, for 350, not too far from me here, and it's a Ford one. I said, well, okay, maybe I can make it work, and you know, realized that of course afterwards that the uh, Ford transfer cases are driver's side drop. I haven't bought it yet, so I'm not burned on that one yet. But I said, well, you know what? I did a little bit of reading online and got the uh, impression that I could probably just take the input off of it, the the you know front yoke for the that would go towards the transmission, off of it, and put it on the MP205 that I got here, and. Uh, and then I'd be golden, you know, that is assuming that the NP205 I already have here, the GM NP205, which is a passenger side drop, had, did not have the figure eight pattern and instead had the circular bolt pattern. Well, I had a look at it and here's what I found. Well, here's the NP205, nyuk nyuk. Uh, this thing has been sitting here for probably six years and I never really looked hard enough at it to realize that this is just another NP203. So I don't have an NP205, which means that even if I pick up this Ford one, I can't go and steal the uh, the friggin uh, you know input shaft or input uh, bearing and uh, yoke off of it and put it on this one because it's not even an NP205. So. I've got to, you know, figure out a new plan for that. Yeah, frustrating as hell. On to the next bit of frustration. Here's the uh, inner seals I picked up. These are brand new. And they don't look like they'll possibly work, even though they are the same. Apparently the same. You know what? That almost doesn't look the same. Maybe I got a little bit of a stiff, uh, a stiff on this one. Let me just take care of these two here. This is the old one, which was pretty much destroyed before I took it out. I destroyed it taking it out. I managed to pull a part number off it. You can't see it there. But it's 472394. And this is supposed to be the equivalent. But you know what? It doesn't look like it's the equivalent. The inner diameter is different. And that was the problem that I was seeing, is that it was not big enough. And if you look, oh, okay. So maybe Napa just gave me the wrong part. I was thinking that I was stuffed because uh, because the uh, the part just simply wasn't going to work for what it was. That whatever was there wasn't correct, or whatever was recommended wasn't correct. Well, that's something, I suppose. I'll take these back. That was thirty bucks worth of seals, and I didn't install them, so hopefully I can return them. Oh boy. Anyways. What are some of the other frustrations? Well, no, that's not true. There's not any more frustrations. The new bearings are the, are correct. I checked them out, and they uh, look the same as this one, which I just pushed out of the uh, thing there. Another frustration, my parts washer pump has failed. It doesn't work anymore, so the uh, spindles that are soaking in there, I'll just have to manually scrub off. It's always fun. Oh, yeah, enough whining. I'll go back to work. I'm not going to let this get me frustrated, but it's just one of those things that, you know, come on, you know. Anyways, 
I need a Dodge MP205 divorce transfer case, but apparently those were only available in the 70s. <laughs> so I'm going to keep looking. I cleaned up the spindles here. I masked off the, uh, the uh, you know, precision machine surfaces with duct tape and stuck the rag inside as well as masking off the uh, inner surface of it as well, you know, as much as I could. And just blasted them quickly in the uh, thing there, and they look a lot cleaner. And it's not really that important. It was more for uh, rust prevention than it was for cosmetics. Okay, so you're going to notice that I was very bad. And I was deliberately very bad because I actually had another look at this spindle and uh, actually masked it off a lot higher and blasted off this part here because... It seems that the seal must have failed quite a while ago and the rust had actually encroached fairly far up past the seal edge and it was quite rough there. So I want to get the rust out of it and what I'm going to do is I'm going to use some emery paper on it and try and smooth it out real nice so that it matches the original bearing surface that was there or at least seal surface that was there because what's there now is quite rough. As a matter of fact this uh, rotor is showing some signs of distress here. Uh, first of all you're seeing some bluing on it. Which none too good. Second of all, I'll just see if I can find an edge that maybe you might have. Well, you can see it's it's dinged up. It's like somebody was beating on it with a friggin hammer. And I don't know what to think of that. You can even, you can see some almost like I don't know, it's it's almost like rust, but it's quite pronounced. They also smashed the threads a bit. They obviously clamped this in a vise at some point. You can see a little bit of crosshatch pattern right there. You can also probably see where the threads are slightly mashed as well at that point. I remember when I was taking the spindle nut off that this one was quite tight and I'm not too impressed with it. You know, like Internally it's fine, just somebody beat the hell out of it on the outside. So anyways this one's going to be a little more work than the other one but we'll do our best with it. Okay well I took some uh, 400 grit sandpaper and polish that surface somewhat. I only touched that surface, the seal surface, but you can still see there's a groove in there. Uh, I'm not sure. I'm going to call that good enough, but I'm going to see if I can move the seal inwards just a bit in the actual spindle itself, or the, actually I should say the hub itself, and see if I can get it to write on the, the better, more polished surface. We'll see how that goes. Well, it's uh, midnight, Friday night, and this is as far as I've gotten tonight. Uh, I've got the uh, knuckles all sandblasted here. Uh, I had to re-sandblast the uh, you know, driver's side one because it was starting to get some surface rust because it had been sitting for a while. I also uh, cleaned up the spindles, cleaned up the uh, yokes. For the most part, I sandblasted them. I protected the machine surfaces once again with duct tape. But uh, the big one, I, there's no way it really fit well inside my sandblast cabinet. So I went and I just blasted what I, a little bit of what I could and then just wire wheeled it. I'll degrease it tomorrow morning and then it'll get paint as well. Uh, left, or what is left to uh, sandblast is, uh, well, it's the uh, a part of the, uh, the, uh, uh, oh lockout hubs these parts right here i'm just going to wire wheel those and degrease them there's one it's the passages the driver's side one and the uh retainers for the uh, u-bolts apart from that i'm just about uh, done there's as well there's the hubs from the uh ugh, from the obviously the front uh you know uh rotors here it's getting late i'm getting punchy here uh, but apart from that, that's probably about it for sandblasting on, or for cleaning up and painting on the uh, front axle there. Uh, I'm probably not going to finish finally assembling this stuff uh, until uh, I get my new seals for the uh, ends there. So probably what I'll do is I just won't put the four-wheel drive or the uh, axle shafts in. Uh, but I'll put it all together that way. I still have a rolling vehicle, but it, uh, you know, will be there. Or I could put them in. I guess it doesn't matter either way. Same difference, but I'll have to take the uh, knuckles off again. Oh, and there you go. Well, that's it for today. 
I say very dark outside. I don't think you can see anything. <laughs> Except for a cat that's been a real pest. Anyways, good night.